hello friends uh, now we are going for a new topic for a discussion that is engine systems so once you know an engine there are various systems required for proper working of the engine like for example we required starting system ignition system cooling system lubrication system and many more such kind of systems are required for proper working of the engine so if these systems are not working properly our engine also will not work properly so basically we are going to discuss about cooling system lubrication system starting system etc and how it works that we are going to see initially now we will go for a cooling system we are knowing that normally cooling system is used for an atom boil for to cool the engines now how this works what is the need of cooling system if you don't provide a cooling system what will happen that we are going to discuss in this particular lecture in a cooling system or before going to the cooling system we should know heat balance of typical diesel engines how the heat is produced and how heat is utilized for a particular engine that we are going to see now here in this particular part what we have shown is 100% heat of fuel supplied so when we burn and fuel it will generate a heat that heat is considered to be 100% so generated heat is considered to be a hundred percent that hundred percent heat is utilized by many ways so this is first second third way the first way where it is utilized that is called as heat to exhaust gases what is heat to exhaust gases general percentage of heat to exhaust gases is 33 percent now it is not hard and fast that every vehicle should have 33 percent only some of the vehicle may have 30 percent some of the vehicle may have 35 percent but the general average percentage of heat which is going with exhaust gases is 33%. Another major part where the heat leaves to the atmosphere is heat to cooling water. It goes 31%. Average 31% of heat out of 100% is going with cooling water. Next third important part is heat to indicated horsepower or generally we nowadays we use all the indicated power indicated power is generated is about 36 percent out of 100 percent now this indicated power is also divided into two component like heat to friction and heat to brake power heat to friction and other it goes 10 percent and heat to brake power it's about 26 percent so this is useful part this part is useful part which we used for running the vehicle for the particular application whereas other parts like to the friction to the cooling water to the exhaust gas these are actually a wastage these are actually wastage and this is a useful part so by this i can say that general efficiency thermal efficiency of the engine is about 26 percent some of the engine they are available with 30 percent nowadays 33 32 percent but generally in the range of 26 to 30 percent brake power we will get this is a typical heat balance of an engine now our focus is with this cooling water so now we have to see that how heat can be removed by using cooling water or some other devices so in this particular system i have to remove or we have to remove the 31 percent of heat from the engine okay now heat distribution whatever we have seen till now the same graph is i am showing that 100 percent heat is supplied heat to the exhaust gas is 33 percent heat to the cooling water 31 percent heat to indicated power 36 percent heat to friction 10 percent and heat to brake power is 26 percent already we have discussed this the next point comes for a discussion is need of cooling system so what is need of cooling system now cooling system is required to avoid overheating of various engine parts so if your cooling system is not working properly then overheating of the engine part occurs so if you have to avoid an overheating of various engine part we have to provide a cooling system okay now if overheating occurs if the cooling system is not working and overheating occurs the following trouble now what are the trouble first trouble you have pressure of lubricating oil which causes piston seizure and excessive friction between piston and cylinder so generally what happen if your engine temperature goes on increases and as engine temperature increases 
the lubricating oil will get evaporated evaporated means that liquid gets converted into the vapor and as liquid will get converted into the vapor then the engine will become a dry and the metal part will come in contact with each other and as metal part will come in contact with each other they will rub over each other and then there will be uh, friction generated and there will be loss of useful power second is because of high temperature thermal stress is also generated we know thermal stress, stress is generated because of high temperature uneven expansion of the engine part occur and because of that stress is generated that is called as thermal stresses then next trouble is piston ring are stucking now we discuss about thermal stresses and the piston ring because of uneven stress is generated the piston ring may get stuck into the engine part and then it may become quite difficult to remove it next is damage of piston and combustion chamber so if overheating occurs there may be change in dimension because of change in dimension the piston may not move smoothly and then there may be a damage to the piston occurs next trouble is distortion warping of exhaust wall exhaust wall may change its shape because of uh, overheating and if it change shape then there will be uh, leakage occurs so these are all need of the cooling system if we have to avoid these all troubles what we have to do is we have to avoid overheating and if we have to avoid overheating the cooling system should be working properly if there is any trouble to the cooling system these are trouble coming to the engine okay now there are various types of the cooling system like air cooling system water cooling system etc out of that first is air cooling system it's quite simple mostly used for in two wheelers where the engine size is less the heat generated is less you can see that the air cooling system is used and there we are using such kind of fins you might be understood what is meant by fin from the knowledge of heat and mass transfer the fin is the component which is provided to have more amount of heat transfer by increasing area it transfer more heat to the air and more heat going to the air so such kind of fin you might be seen over the engine and over this there will be air flowing as the air flows air temperature less fin temperature is more and as air temperature less fin temperature is more there will be heat transfer occurs but this can be used only for small engine because small engine burns lesser amount of fuel and as lesser amount of fuel is burned the less amount of heat has to be removed so small engine uses air cooling system another actual photograph of air cooling system here you can see that fins are present here there is a fins are present here and that fin increases contact area and hence more amount of heat will be released now let us see one of the video of the air cooled engine this video we have taken from a youtube so courtesy goes for a youtube and let's understood how you this air cooling system works some engines use what are called cooling fins their design makes the exposed surface area as large as possible which allows more heat energy to radiate away and be carried off in convection currents in the air more air flows over the fins and more heat is carried away for a vehicle moving at speed, airflow over the engine is high. At low speeds or during idling, heat builds up. Then the engine can use some help. Air should always be able to flow over the engine effectively. One way to remove heat is to use a fan with shrouds and ducts to direct air to the cylinders. There are many places to mount a fan and many ways to drive it. In this engine, it's on the flywheel. It's driven here by fan belts off the crankshaft. So by the video, we have seen some of the actual picture of the of, uh, air cooled system at the same time we have seen that some of the applications are there where the fans are also used so the diagram which is uh, required for an exam so in the exam we cannot draw the actual photograph what we have seen but we can draw the diagram like this this is the air cooled engine system so this is an engine this is an engine cylinder 
this is inlet wall this is exhaust wall and this whatever you are seeing this is what a fins this is what a fins and this is a spark plug so what this fin does fin increases the contact area with the air and as the contact area increases heat transfer will also goes on increases and more heat will be get rejected to the atmospheric air so uh, all student can draw this particular figure for the air cooled system now let's move to the water cooled system in the water cooled system there are various type of water cooled system that is thermosiphon cooling thermosiphon with wall etc 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 there are many system so we'll go one by one and first system into that is a thermosiphon cooling system now you might be studied what is meant by siphon in the fluid mechanics a siphon is a system siphon pipe is generally used in fluid mechanics where the water flows automatically we don't require any energy as a input so th here we are using word as a thermo siphon what is meant by thermo siphon thermo means because of temperature siphon means moving automatically so in this particular system because of temperature water is moving and that's why it's called as thermo siphon cooling system or it also called as a natural circulation system means the water which has got circulated here we don't use any kind of pump or any kind of external device naturally water gets circulated now you are observing one jeep is present here and in the jeep this is the engine position engine is connected with what radiator this is radiator the radiator is connected to engine by using two tubes so the radiator is provided at the front radiator is provided at the front and it has also radiator fan so detail so by this figure we can understood where is the what is the position of a cooling system in the vehicle we can see that it's provided at the front so that natural air can also natural air can enter over the radiator and natural air can also used for cooling the system now let's understood a detail working of this this is what detailed figure of the thermosiphon cooling system here the engine cylinders are provided it may be single cylinder or multi cylinder if it is multi cylinder number of cylinders are provided here around that water is circulated this is a radiator radiator which we have seen in normal vehicles radiator is connected to engine water jacket engine water jacket means the cavities through which water is flowing that is what called as water jacket the radiator is connected to water jacket by using two hose this is upper hose upper pipeline rubber pipeline and this is lower hose lower rubber pipeline and radiator has a tubes and on the tube the fin is provided to increase the heat transfer so these are radiator tubes this is what radiator fan radiator fan takes the input energy from engine itself so from engine crankshaft the belt is kept so this is what a belt the belt is kept and that gives mechanical energy to fan and fan will be rotating okay so this is what a construction of the thermosiphon cooling systems in the construction we have seen this is the engine another part required for cooling is radiator radiator is connected to engine by using hose system there is a radiator fan kept for running a radiator fan we required the mechanical energy and that mechanical energy is taken from a crankshaft itself now let's understand how this thermosiphon cooling system works